Hey everyone, Sean Gladney here at the Warrior Drumline. Thanks for checking out the sixth video in our series of Fundamentals for the Battery. In this video, we're going to talk about the specifics of tenor drumming. Tenors, commonly referred to as quads, are typically set up with four main drums. You have drum one, which is your front right, drum two, front left, drum three, back right, and drum four, back left. If you were to go right, left, right, left, you're going to go down in pitch. Then, most tenors have at least one Spock drum, or the little six inch drum. Some have two Spock drums side by side, and that's just personal preference. At Williams, we have one Spock drum. That's going to be the highest pitch of them all, and sounds closer to a snare drum. Next, let's talk about the sticks that we're going to use. Now we can use snare drum sticks on tenors, that's perfectly fine, but they also make specific tenor sticks. Typically they're a little shorter, and the bead is usually a plastic, bigger, round plastic ball. That just gets a different sound quality out of the tenors. On the topic of sound quality, let's next talk about where we play on these drums. Similar to timpani, if you play tenors in the exact center, it doesn't sound good, it sounds thuddy. If you play too close to the edge, right, it's high pitch and ringy and thin. If you go roughly halfway to center, you get the nice tone that we're looking for. You want to make sure that wherever you find that tone, you want to put both sticks right next to each other on the same concentric circle around your drum. Now, different manufacturers of drums and different drum heads alter where that spot is a little bit. So use your ears to find the best spot on your drums with your heads. But make sure that both sticks are in that same concentric circle and you're getting a good tone. On drum two and drum one and the Spock drum, to get in that playing position, our left and right stick are naturally side by side. As we move out to drum three and drum four, we have to change our orientation of our sticks just a little bit. On drum three, your right hand is going to be a little higher or a little farther forward than your left. Also notice that the angle of my left is a little sharper now. This is just so we're on the same concentric circle and our hands are out of the way of each other. On drum four, we have the opposite. The left hand is farther forward or higher than the right hand. As you move around the drums, this should flow very naturally and we get a nice windshield wiper motion. Again, to keep those sticks out of the way of each other. As you move side to side on the drum, it should flow very naturally. It's, you should think more about going side to side and less about pulling back. You really don't have to pull back to play on the Spock drum. On the Spock, I do have to pull my elbows back just a little bit to get in the right playing, playing position. In tenor drumming, we talk about the X and the Y axis. The x-axis, just like a graph, is the side to side. The y-axis is the up and the down. On tenors, the y-axis, up and down, should look the same as when you're playing on snare drum or playing on just one drum. We don't change our technique at all just because we're moving around. The up and down needs to be the exact same. It needs to be start from the wrist, should have good strokes, all of our four stroke types, good velocity, everything is the exact same. The x-axis, the moving side to side, is the only thing that changes. That's where our arm transports our wrist. Our arm doesn't start the stroke, our arm just moves our wrist side to side where it needs to go. Always make sure that you're still using good proper wrist turn on all your tenor drumming strokes. Typically we say learn everything on tenors on one drum, and for some reason we've all picked drum two. Learn everything on drum two first, and then move it around the drum. So make sure that your y-axis is solid, and then learn which drum to play on in the x-axis. And that's how you should move and get good flow around the drums. Now, as we're moving around the drums, you may notice that every once in a while you have to do what's called a crossover. And just how the music is written, we're trying to get a specific sound that means that you're going to have to take one stick and cross it over the other. We have two different types of crossovers. The first is called the stick cross, and that's when we're going on drums that are right next to each other. 
like drums one and two, and we're going to cross at this stick. Whether your right hand's on top or your left hand, you're crossing at this stick. It's in, you're going to have to raise your hand up just a little bit to get over it and still be able to make the proper wrist turn, but you don't want to bring it up and over too exaggerated. The other type of crossover is called the arm cross. That's where we actually cross past the wrist, past the fulcrum. And that's when we're going out and we're trying to do crossovers on drums three and four. From here, you should be able to turn both sticks up in the proper stroke and be just fine, whether your right hand or left hand is on top of each other. That's the arm cross. The last cool thing about playing tenors is that you can do what's called a scrape or a sweep. And what that is, is it's a diddle, two notes on one hand, and you move it between drums. So the first note is on one drum, and the second note is on another drum. That leads us to a lot of really cool musical and visual ideas that we can do in the music of tenor drumming. Now, we have to adjust our playing zones a little bit for sweeps and scrapes. To play in the normal playing zones, to get a diddle, which is gonna be pretty fast, to jump from here to here, that's a long distance. And you're probably going to scrape the rims as you go across. So when we play sweeps or scrapes, you want to use playing zones that are as close together as possible. So right here and right here, going between two and one. Again, make sure you're getting a good tone. You're not too close to the edge. You want to be on the same normal concentric circle that you were on in your regular zones but we're just moving them closer together. Same here, we're going to use it as close as we can on the outside drums as well. Sweeps and scrapes are really cool when you go fast, they look cool, they sound cool. Then you can add sweeps and crossovers together and the world tenor drumming can just become very cool in the way that it sounds as well as how visually it looks when you get all of that combined together. And that draws a lot of people to play tenors. Again, the most important thing about tenors is mastering the Y axis and your technique on one drum and then moving it around to all of the other drums.